Welcome to Just a Minute. Parsons. And as the minute wolves fades away, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this special edition of Just a Minute from BBC Television Centre. After 45 years of entertaining via the radio, we thought it was about time to perform this show for your viewing pleasure. So without further ado, please welcome to the show four talented and delightful performers. And they are, seated on my right, Paul Merton and Sue Perkins. And seated on my left, Ruth Jones and Marcus Brigstock. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> the players will try to speak for just a minute on a subject that I give them, and then must try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviation. The other three panellists can challenge at any time they wish, and if I uphold the challenge, they gain a point, and they take over the subject, and if not, the person speaking gains a point and keeps the subject. And we go on like that until the whistle goes. And by the way, they can repeat the subject on the card. Paul, the subject here is common misconceptions. 60 seconds as usual, starting now. Humphrey Bogart in Play It Again, Sam, which wasn't the name of the film, it was Casablanca. He never said those words, in fact. There's a common misconception that school days are the happiest of your life, is something people often say as well, as if somehow the misery of being in some educational establishment where your name may be construed by other students who turn <coughs> it into some... Uh, Ruth Challenge. How does one construe or misconstrue a name? I don't know. Oh. Yes. <laughs> this has got very metaphysical very quickly. Mm, I know. <laughs> right. What's your challenge? What's your challenge, I? That what you propose is actually impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better shut up for the rest of the show then, hadn't I? <laughs> Ruth, as you've never played the game before, I think I'm going to be generous and give you the benefit of the doubt and say you have a correct challenge, you have a point for that, and it's common misconceptions, 40 seconds still available, starting now. There's a very common misconception in my household, and that is that I can do housework. It's not something that I'm particularly allergic to, it's just that I don't ever want to do it. So what I tend to do is try and get other people in my household to do it. Uh, it's a repetition of household. Yes, and yeah. also do. Like a second homeowner. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> so, Marcus, you had a correct challenge. Yeah. You take over the subject, you get a point, of course, for that. Yes. Common misconception starting now. John McCrerick, the racing commentator, is both common and was misconceived. I don't <laughs> like him. This is a misconception that people have. Other... <laughs> As I said earlier, that whistle tells us 60 seconds have elapsed and whoever is speaking then gets an extra point. And it was Marcus Brigstock, who's naturally in the lead at the end of that round. Marcus, we'd like you to begin the next round. OK. And the subject is night school. Can you tell us something about night school in this game starting now? I am very glad to have this subject because I actually went to night school with Sir Galahad and it was there that I was first shown <laughs> how to put on armour and charge around the country on behalf of King Arthur in a search for the Holy Grail. Night school is a very enjoyable place if you have a lance and a pony. <laughs> and other than that, I would say that it's mainly filled up with very lonely people trying to meet <laughs> other... Uh, Sue, you've uh, challenged. Repetition of very. Yes. Oh, yes. Very, very. Very, very, yes. <laughs> so, correct challenge, 33 seconds. You tell us something about night school in this game starting now. Marcus's night school isn't so interesting if you're a lady. You have to hang around like Guinevere and grow your hair, sometimes wear a pointy hat and wait on a turret for a man to come and rescue you, <laughs> preferably with a white charger. Now, when I see said beautiful albino pony coming towards me, I know that safety is at hand. I will once to get to be able to... Uh, Paul Challenge. Uh, have we strayed a little way from night school? <laughs> <laughs> a major yes. stray from it. Yes. And you said nowhere near night school, as far as yeah. I was concerned. Well, I was on a turret overlooking night school. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't establish that night was the nights with the beginning with a K. <laughs> Don't be strict with me, Nicholas. I'm not strict, Keep darling. the love alive. <laughs> <laughs> Not another one, Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. Over 45 years, no one's been safe. Girl in every port. Yeah. <laughs> On every show. Right there we are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Paul, a correct challenge. And you have night school, have 14 seconds starting now. I never attended night school. I suppose I went to some evening classes round about 1980. There were some acting lessons being taught at Sutton Library by this gentleman who sold fridges during the day. And I went <laughs> along and I didn't really pick up a great deal, but... <laughs> Speaking as the whistle went, gained an extra point. He's moved forward. Um, he's in second place, but it's early days, isn't it? Uh, Sue Perkins, yes. will you begin the next round? The subject, who done it? You tell us something about who done it in this game starting now. The word who done it refers to a plot heavy crime thriller that reached its peak in the 1920s. It's quintessentially a British genre, and I would say its greatest exponent is Agatha Christie, who mm. pioneered the use of the locked room. There is essentially a space that no one can get in or out of, in which she piled it high with stock characters, such as the American industrial magnate, the young floozy, the ingenue, the virginal young boy who was yet... Oh, yes, Marcus. Repetition of young. Oh. It was too young, yes. The young floozy. Mm. Very good, though. Thank you. Mm. Very, very good. good. Sorry. Very good. <laughs> You've spoilt it for everyone Yes, I now. know. I know. We're it's all just, enjoying it's that. It's a game. <laughs> <laughs> and, Marcus, you had a correct challenge, and you've got 26 seconds. You yes. tell us something about who done it starting now. When I was growing up, the question of who done it was normally answered by my father, who'd say it was the dog, <laughs> and then everybody would move away from the dog and towards. Oh yes, oh, of course, challenge. the dog. Double dog. Twice on the dog. Oh, Sue, you challenged first, yes. Yes, uh, yes. repetition of dog. Dog, yes, the dog came into once. Sue, you have uh, you have the dog. No, you don't. You have who done it? <laughs> and, uh... I'll have whatever you give me, Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> There are 18 seconds, Sue, starting now. There are some great whodunit writers. Dorothy L. Sayers, Ruth Rendell, I've mentioned, obviously, the most famous, whose creation, Hercule Poirot, the mustachioed Belgian, remains foremost in our minds when we think of a person most likely to detect a crime. <laughs> there he... Oh, Paul, you I disagree. Him. I would say Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I'd say he comes to mind with solving a crime before he could follow up. Or, or matter Brian, of opinion, of course. Or Brian opinion. Paddock as well. <laughs> I yes. Poirot, Paddock, Holmes, they're all very much of a type. I know. And Paul, you've got him with one second to go. I'm sorry, I've withdrawn my challenge. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion who you think is the it best. It is, it is. And uh, she has an incorrect challenge. And, as I said before, one second to go, starting now. Miss Marple will be furious cos she thinks the best. she's the best detective. <laughs> So, Sue Perkins, the old speaker for this one, gained an extra point. And at the end of that round, she's taken the lead just one ahead of Paul Merton. Paul, I'm sure this has been chosen for you because you did a programme about it. Ibiza. <laughs> Tell us something about that place in this game starting now. You're quite right. It was subject of a travelogue I did earlier this year. Ibiza is where I went, the great island paradise that people sometimes see as the ultimate party destination. But when you see beyond the clubs that are there, you realise it's a beautiful island full of <laughs> wonderful history. Uh, Sue Challenge. Repetition of island. Yes, we yeah, Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, sir. Sue, you were listening well. You got in with 45 seconds to go on Ibiza starting now. Last time I went to Ibiza, Paul Merton was there making a documentary. He was dressed <laughs> scantily in lycra, doing a seemingly sexual dance which involved... Ruth Challenge. I think that is quite disturbing for the audience. <laughs> that, that actual image. It was actually... <laughs> nothing disturbing about seeing Paul full, uh, full uh, tilt on really? the dance floor. Yeah. But, but when I lycra. saw the programme, I don't think he ever wore lycra. No. No. This it was worse was, than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was, uh, yeah, this was in his spare time, Nicholas. In his spare. So, uh, Ruth, we give you the benefit of the doubt, and you have uh, 37 seconds on Ibiza starting now. I went to Ibiza when I was four years of age. It was the first holiday that I ever was taken on by my parents, who also had two boys that they took with them, who were my brothers, and also <laughs> a sister who was not yet born. But she was inside my mother's belly because my mother... Um, Sue Challenge. I thought I was just a mother, but I'm wrong. 
Um, I think... It might actually... Yes, it might have been repetition of mother. Yes, she went with her mother at the beginning. Yes. She said she went with her mother... See, I had a crisis of confidence and I've overcome it now. <laughs> <laughs> repetition of mother. So she did mention mother more than once. Sue, you were listening well. You've got him with 21 seconds on Ibiza starting now. I have actually never been to Ibiza, truth be told. It strikes fear into my heart because I'm... Ruth Challenge. Hesitation on strikes. Mm, yes, a little bit of hesitation yeah. there. But Ruth, you had a correct challenge. So you have the subject of Ibiza, 17 seconds still, starting now. Ibiza is surrounded by water, as is the case with many islands. And, in fact, you can jump off all sorts of sides of the island, especially in Ibiza. And Marcus Challenge. Island. Repetition of island. Yes. Yes, again. I thought it was... was it islands, islands and islands? Mm. Plural yes. and single. Yes, yes you're right. <laughs> It was intentional. Mm. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Mark has an incorrect challenge. Yes. Mm. So, Ruth uh, Jones has another point, and she's still got the subject, and she's eight seconds still to go on Ibiza, starting now. In Ibiza, you can buy the most delicious chocolate ice cream. I don't know why it is so different from other glasses or types of... Uh, Mark has challenge. Even in French, that's glass. <laughs> 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 so... So, de <laughs> deviation from any recognised yeah. language. <laughs> yeah. She was searching for way to say ice cream and she wanted to say glacé, but, mm. Marcus, you've cleverly got in with one second to oh. go. <laughs> you've won no friends in this audience. <laughs> <laughs> but you have got the subject. So and another that. point, of course. Mm. And you um, have one second of Ibiza starting now. I've been to Pasha. I was much too old for it, but I had fun. <laughs> So, Marcus, big song was then speaking, when the whistle went, he's moved forward, he's equal with Paul Merton in second place, there behind uh, Sue Perkins, who's in the lead. Marcus, we'd like you to begin the next round. The subject is chat-up lines. Oh, hello. I'm sure you have many for us to tell. Wow. 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. I've never really been smooth enough to pull off the chat-up line, but I have been studying one of the great masters, and that is, of course, Mr Nicholas Parsons, who, <laughs> just before we began playing this evening, turned to the panellists sitting immediately to my right and said, was your father a thief? At which point Ruth punched him immediately in the face, <laughs> and Nicholas lay on the floor <laughs> saying... Paul. Sadly, repetition of Nicholas. Mm. That's yeah. no, nothing sad about that. The world needs more of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I quite enjoy hearing Did it. Did you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it wasn't true, of course. She didn't punch me. She wouldn't punch somebody. I was telling her how glorious she looked. I wasn't chancing my arm, you know, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> You're a silver fox. I'm, I've reached the age <laughs> where you can do a, a provocative chat-up line and they know you're no threat. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Paul, you had a correct challenge. Oh, do I? Oh. <coughs> yes. Chat up lines, 39 seconds starting now. Is that a D mob suit you're wearing? Would be the ultimate anti chat up line because it wouldn't impress anybody. Eyes wasn't a bit like Marcus any good at chat up lines, uh, I. Ruth's challenge. You said eyes wasn't. <laughs> you Sorry, yes. You I'm, I'm working class. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think matters what class you are, I think it's bad grammar. It is indeed. And it Ruth has a it. correct challenge, and she has 32 seconds on chat-up lines, Ruth, starting now. The worst chat-up line I ever heard was when somebody said to me, Oh, do you want to get out of those wet clothes? <laughs> Sue challenge first. Hesitation! Yeah. <laughs> Darling, will you explain to me what was, what was that about? <laughs> well, That's hot, hot yeah. stuff, Nicholas. Like, do you want to? Do... <laughs> oh! I thought that was them wetting the clothes. It was. <laughs> it was. I think it was a ghastly chat-up line. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you challenge and it correctly. So, 25 seconds. Chat-up lines starting now. The worst chat-up line was given to me by a ten-year-old boy in Paisley after a show. It is so disgusting. I cannot possibly allow uh, the broadcast. So, Ruth challenge. Paisley is a lovely pattern, and I think you're incorrect for saying that it's disgusting. <laughs> well, <laughs> but 